Well, hello friends, Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, man, this doesn't work. Let's get open for business, and let's wake up the football gods up here. Wake up, guys. And, um, it's Friday. I'm about uh, two and a half hours from my live stream. Um, I've been out working in the yard at my place out in the heat, getting my sweat on, getting some sweat out of here. I'm getting ready to go upstairs and cook some shrimp and grits for dinner. And then we'll be doing our live stream. All right, so I'm making it my thing to set the record straight. You know, sometimes we live in a fantasy world where we don't know reality. And I need to, at least for my own benefit, set the record straight on some things. Because, you know, as I go through, there's been such a trashing of our quarterback and stuff. And I'm not saying that Dak is perfect, that Dak is the be-all, and that he is everything right now. We don't know. That's the reality of it. We've had quarterbacks who started out poor and became fantastic later in their careers. We've had other ones that started out fantastic and that went off a clip and were never heard from again. That's the way it is in football. It's a great unknown. All I can say is, is what we've done so far and put it into a historical contest. And as I go through and I read some of the comments, there's so many fans out there that don't really know all of the facts. And I'm going to try and bring them to you. Because somebody commented, they said, you know, I love Dak Prescott, but let's be real. If Tony Romo had this team, we would win multiple Super Bowls. So I started thinking about this, and I started going back. Because I'm remembering the years of Tony Romo. Because we always hear that, well, you know what, Tony Romo never had a defense. You know, Tony Romo was let down by the team. You know, he didn't have the talent that Dak has and everything else, and that's why he didn't win. And I'm not doing this to belittle Tony Romo because I know a lot of you guys are going to come after me and going to hate me for doing this, but I'm going to put it out there because I want you to know the truth. All right. In 2007, after, I believe, six years of missing the playoffs, we had... Bill Parcells, and Bill Parcells is famous not only for winning Super Bowls with the New York Giants, but everywhere he goes, he stocks the cupboard. He is one of those guys who's great at finding talent and, and bringing it. I mean, he found Tony Romo. He found DeMarcus Ware. He found, you know, Jason Witten. Cornerstones of the Dallas Cowboys. You could point back to Bill Parcells. And we had, I would say, pretty good coaching staff with Bill Parcells and Sean Payton, two guys that have won Super Bowls. Sean Payton was our offensive coordinator. But finally in 2007, we had a breakout year after missing playoffs for six years. We went 13-3. and three. It's incredible. We made the playoffs and had home field advantage throughout. And you had to look and say, you know what? Bill Parcells has built a team the right way through the draft, accumulating talent and getting great players. Because let me tell you the Pro Bowl players on that team. Because, you know, Romo never had people. On offense, tackle, Flozell Adams. Guard, Leonard Davis. That's the way he always said it, Leonard Davis. Center, Andre Garrard, three offensive linemen. He had a young Jason Witten at tight end and a Terrell Owens at wide receiver. And he had the original beast mode, Marion the Barbarian, all on offense, pro bowlers. Three offensive linemen, a running back, a tight end, and a wide receiver. It's unbelievable. On defense, because we're always told, well, yeah, Romo's got the offense, but he never had a defense. 
On defense, Greg Ellis, Ken Hamlin, free safety, Terrence Newman, cornerback, Demarcus Ware, and Roy Williams. And for good measure, throw in Nick Falk, our kicker. The Dallas Cowboys had 13 Pro Bowl players on that team. All pros. This means the very best in the league. Terrell Owens, first team. Demarcus Ware, first team. Jason Witten, first team. Floezel Adams, second team. And Leonard Davis, second team. Five all pros. You look at this roster. You say, oh my God. Oh, my goodness. It's a lot of firepower. No wonder we had home field advantage. 13-0. Let me go through a little highlight here. The Cowboys faced the New York stinking Giants in the playoffs. We're the number one seed with a bye week, playing a wild card. Corners who has a nice return, 25 yards down to the 37-yard line. Fourth quarter we go, first play of the fourth quarter. It's third and six, Manning to Steve Smith again. 11-yard gain to the Dallas nine. First and goal from there. Ahmad Bradshaw, what a huge addition to this running game he's been. Gives them some quickness and some speed, a little bit different type of runner than Brandon Jacobs. And now, here is the genuine article in Brandon Jacobs. Look out. 265 allegedly pounds coming straight into your living room. Oh, look uh, out. Chuck oh, he got a light bulb. <laughs> Giants take a 21-17 lead with 10 minutes and 24 seconds to go. Throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. For his life, and he's sacked by Reggie Torbord, a group of G-Men Cowboys forced to punt. Tony Sperano, the offensive line coach, giving the business to the rest of the Sperano's. Next possession for the Cowboys. Romo is sacked by oh, Kavika oh, Mitchell. Oh, hey, what makes him great also causes him to suffer. Next play, second and 24 from their own 39 as Romo could have thrown it away, did not, took the sack. Romo with five minutes and 30 seconds to go down four. Finds oh, Jason Witten. A huge 20-yard gain on second and 24 after an illegal formation made it third and nine, Romo. To Terrell Owens going deep, but there's a flag flying because Corey Webster made contact with Owens' face mask, getting off the line of scrimmage. Corey Webster was locked into him a lot of this game, one-on-one. -on -one. He did a good job for most of this game, but he got caught right there. And so uh, Tom Coughlin, not happy. Next play, first and ten after that flag, Romo throws this one away, but in should have got it out of the pocket. Yeah, yeah. He, is. he can't yeah. be in the box. He's not get the pocket. He got to step outside the tackles if he desires to throw the Intentional ball away. And that led to a Dallas punt eventually. Eli Manning needing one first down to wrap things up because Dallas did not have enough timeouts to stave off elimination with a first down by the Giants. Instead, they come up with a big stop of Eli Manning and a third and two later on as Romo gets the ball back. Flips the ball to Jason Witten for a big 18-yard gain and first down. Three plays later, second and 11. Romo, if he sticks it in the end zone, the Cowboys essentially win, but he has to throw it away. Next play, third and 11. 21 seconds left in the game. Romo to the end zone, and Patrick Creighton throws it too far. So it's the last chance for the Dallas Cowboys. The top seed in the NFC who swept the Giants in the regular season. And it is picked in the end zone by R.W. McCorders. The only turnover. Okay. So that playoff game. That loss, 21-17 to the Giants. Marion Barber rushed for 129 yards in that game. 129 yards. You had T.O. You had Terry Glenn. You had Jason Witten. You had three Pro Bowl offensive linemen. 50% completion rate. 201 yards. One TD. One interception. His rating 
it wouldn't be until 2010 before we'd win another playoff game. So when somebody says, with this team, with these guys that we have, Roma would win multiple Super Bowls. But understand, we had 13 Pro Bowlers, okay? Some of which, well, one of them, still with the team, Jason Witten. Another one went on to win a Super Bowl elsewhere. After that 13 and three, oops, that 13 and three season, what, what's up? What's up? Okay, hold up. There we go. After that 13 and three season, with that team that was built, Roma went eight and five. 11 and 5, we made the playoffs, and um, we beat the we beat the we beat the Lions. No, 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 no. That was later. We beat the Eagles, and then after that, well, he got hurt. One and five, and then eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight, and then finally he went 12 and three with the monster season. He didn't play the last game. So understand that you can have a lot of great players and talent. And things changed quickly in the NFL. We had 13 at NFL record Pro Bowlers, five All Pros, and in that game, and the defense was rated in yardage eighth in the NFL. And in that game, it just wasn't Romo's. So the lesson here is you don't know what you don't know. And before we go through and talk about Dak and think that if Romo was here automatically, we would be winning multiple Super Bowls. Eh, I say pump the brakes on that. Because he did have that team. He did have this defense that we had. Our defense was eighth this year, eighth that year. He had a running back that ran 129 yards. He had good wide receivers. He had all pro linemen. But didn't get it done. We'll talk about this some more tonight on our live stream, and I'm sure I'll get a lot of hate, but I'll see you guys in about two and a half hours.